than 99% of all species that have ever lived on Earth are now extinct. The vast majority died out because they could not successfully compete for food or resources, or they failed to adapt to changes in their environment. For the rest, something more dramatic happened. There have been five major mass extinctions over the course of the Earth's history. The KT extinction wiped out 75% of species. This included the dinosaurs. The KT extinction was the second largest mass extinction event and occurred 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs were an immensely diverse and extremely successful group, but what caused one of the most successful group of animals to be wiped out so suddenly? There are two possible suggestions on the causes of the KT extinction. The first cause is the gradualus cause. One theory suggests that dinosaurs developed cataracts due to increased heat and radiation leading to mass blindness. This prevented the dinosaurs from locating food and mates. Another theory suggests that dinosaurs became too big, sluggish and unintelligent to function. And another theory suggests that mammals were greedy and ate the dinosaur eggs. And the second cause is the catastrophic cause, which includes meteorite impact and extensive volcanism. Nobel Prize winning chemist Harold C. Urey was one of many to take their turn to explain the mass extinctions. He was the first to suggest that it was an impact event, perhaps an asteroid, that the dinosaurs lost their lives to. In 1980, the most famous hypothesis in regards to how exactly the dinosaurs died was suggested by Nobel Prize winning physicist Luis Alvarez. Luis Alvarez, his son the geologist Walter Alvarez, and chemists Frank Cazero and Helen Michels introduced the world famous Alvarez hypothesis. This stated that the mass extinction of the dinosaurs was caused by the impact of a large asteroid which hit in the Yucatan Peninsula of Chicks Club, Mexico, 65 million years ago. In 2010, an international panel of scientists endorsed the Chicks Club impact as the main source of the KT extinction event. They estimated that an asteroid approximately 10 to 15 kilometres in diameter hurtled towards the Earth's surface. This asteroid would have had the same impact as approximately a billion atomic bombs like the ones that fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The evidence that impact was the main cause of the KT extinction is a distinct layer of clay which we have a sample of here. Louis Alvera suggested to measure the original layers of this layer and of the layers above and below. The layer contained a much higher level of iridium concentration than the Earth's crust, which can be seen here by the dramatic spike. Shocked quartz granules and glass spherules are all evident in this boundary layer and are all indicative of an impact event. Volcanism is the second most supported hypothesis through the KT mass extinction. In 1979, Dewey McLean began linking the global mass extinction at the KT boundary with the Deccan Trap's mantle plume flood basalt eruptions in India and created the Deccan Trap's volcanism theory. These lava flows came about when India moved over a hotspot in the Indian Ocean. Enormous quantities of basaltic lava flooded out over what is now the Deccan Plateau of western India and are now over two kilometres thick in places. Although the peak eruptions only lasted several hundred thousand years, this short time straddled the KT boundary, dating the Deccan Traps to around 65 million years ago. Goethe Keller is prominent amongst the latest researchers who reject the theory of the Chicksa Club impact. Evidence reported in 2003 by Keller argued that the crater thought to be left behind by meteor predated the KT boundary mass extinction by about 300,000 years. Keller strongly supports geophysicist Fanfan Cortillo's theory that the Deccan traps occurred suddenly and in three phases. He states that the first and weakest eruption occurred around 67.5 million years ago, with the second and largest coinciding with the extinction and ending close to the KT boundary. The less severe third phase of Deccan activity began about 300,000 years after the KT mass extinction, inhibiting species recovery for the next 500,000 years. Supporters of the meteorite impact theory denied the possibility that volcanism could emit the large quantities of iridium found at the KT boundary. This was disproved in the 1980s when scientists found significant levels of iridium in the aerosols emitted by volcanic eruptions in Hawaii. The possible results of the Deccan Trap eruptions are taught to be similar to those of the impact, with Keller estimating that up to 30 times more gases could be released into the atmosphere by volcanism. According to Peter Schilt et al, the Deccan Trap eruptions could be a trigger for the mass extinctions, but they would have to be combined with an impact factor to create such destruction. 
Thus far, there has been no settlement to the ongoing issue. This extinction was also highly selective. Some groups were relatively unaffected, some were devastated and others were wiped out entirely. Those that did survive were thought to be able to survive the wasteland conditions and the low levels of oxygen that were widespread. Dinosaurs, petrosaurs, belimnoids, ammonoids and marine reptiles were among the creatures that were wiped out entirely. Some species of echinoids and fish suffered high rates of extinction as they tried to adapt to the harsh conditions. Remarkably, crocodiles and turtles survived the extinction and were primarily unaffected. It has been noted that after the extinction event and the time that followed, the mammals seemed to have been primarily omnivores. These creatures that thrived were scavengers. Current research also indicates that small mammals did not explosively diversify across the KT boundary, despite the niche that had been made available to them by the extinction of the dinosaurs. Another theory comes from William Lewis of the University of Colorado. He states that because small mammals live underground, that their bodies were readily adapted for the low oxygen conditions. Aquatic creatures from higher altitudes are also used to being dormant during the cold, oxygen-deprived winters. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles and mud turtles all estivate. Estivation is a process like hibernation, but it is used during periods of drought. The body of the estivator slows down. It has a decreased heart rate, decreased respiration, and a decreased need for food and water. It is used by modern day creatures to adapt to their climate today, but could have been used as a survival technique during those first few dark months when food was scarce. Emerging into the Paleogene, we see creatures such as the billfish, eels, tunas, and flatfish. There was huge changes in the insect communities as well. Ants became dominant and diverse with huge colonies, and butterflies diversified, perhaps to take the place of the leaf-eating insects that had been wiped out in the extinction. It was 63 million years of adapting and evolving before our first relative of the genus Homo walked the earth. We're a thousand miles from Carmelville. I don't do it the next two takes, I'm going home. Checking myself. It indicates that the asteroid hit in the Chicks Club. Oh. I can trap mass basalt man. <laughs> You guys, do you want me to roll up and get a pen? Snakes, muds. <laughs> that was all good. <laughs> but as long as you are with me, there's no place I'd rather be.